this on. The, uh, I, I think the magazine Playboy is probably more noted for its nude centrefolds than anything else. And uh, my next guest is a lady who not only photographed a great many of the nude centrefolds for Playboy, but also has been one of the models herself. Would you welcome the incredible Suze? Take them off. <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely terrified of you. I, I, uh, I, read, I read your book the other night and I haven't been really, really covered, darling. Is it all true? Yes. Really? Yes. A lot of hard work went into that book. A lot, a lot of hard, hard work, work, yes. Yes. It's a good way to keep fit. <laughs> well, you uh, you, start, you, start, you were a nurse, weren't you, in England? Yes. I just sort of give, uh, just started the book there. You're a nurse in England, and you decided uh, to get some extra money. You'd go modelling nude. Yes, it was an advertisement, a very tempting advertisement in underground newspapers. Earn up to hundred pounds a day, you know, nude modelling. And I was very poor, and I wanted a trouser suit very badly. I wanted mm. to look really good, and so I answered it. And, I only made seventeen pounds though because I was so good and so quick. It was, it was, but still, it was the start of something bigger. There's a lot of questions. I, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> and then, and then later on, of course, you decided uh, that you might as well get on the other end of the camera and you started yes. photographing yourself. And I was very interested to read when you're doing those sort of photos that. Uh, the, the models, I, I thought they just took their clothes off and stood there, but they've got to do an awful lot of hard oh, work. Oh, no, you've got to jump around, man. You've got to stretch, get rid of those wrinkles, smile when it's agony, you know, stretch the legs. Uh, it's Throw back the shoulder so the yes. Abigail's then sag. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very hard work. Yeah. You yeah. don't get money for nothing. Uh, do, you, do you find that the, uh, the girls enjoy working with a woman photographer more than with a man photographer. Yeah, it's been a great advantage. I mean, in fact, that's why I got where I did so quickly, you know, because they, they don't feel embarrassed. And the fact that I was a model also, I was able to show them, because most of the girls I shoot haven't modelled before. And so it's, you know, it's a little bit frightening, apart from the fact that they take their clothes off. Mm. So they get a crash course in modelling as well at the mm. same time. And if you're a woman, you can discuss problems and things much more easily and make a joke of it, you know. Yeah. You don't think you're going to be jumped on yeah. every minute of the day. Did you? Yeah, well, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't read the book, you lot. It's all right for you to see. There. It's just, it's like, the, um, uh, I keep losing my train of thought. The, uh, <laughs> you, lighting, lighting a naked body must be a great challenge too. But there again, you know, because you think, oh, beautiful girl, just take a photo of her. But uh, everyone's got some sort of blemish on their body, haven't they? Or some minor yeah. defect that you have to... It, it is, actually. They say that nudes and food are the most difficult <laughs> things to photograph. Yeah. And it's true because you've, you've got expansive skin and you've got skin tone problems and you've got to mould the body with lighting. I mean, it's... Uh, mm. It's, it's quite difficult. It's, it's like doing a painting. It's a, an erotic portrait type session. Uh, now, now on to the nitty-gritty. You, uh, you went to, to America and <laughs> yes. you started working for Playboy and you ended up spending a lot of time at Hugh Hefner's Playboy mansion. Yes, Hugh Hefner flew me over because I discovered a playmate in London that they really wanted to get their hands on. To, yeah. And uh, I had to go along too. You had to I go insisted. Along. They said no and I said yes and I ended up there. It, is the place as incredible as it sounds in your book? Are the electric gates and you have to get special? Oh, it is. It is. It's a Disneyland. It's a sexual Disneyland. It's amazing. Just let me think about it. A sexual <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> And uh, what, are the girls all, I mean, uh, can any girl sort of go up and press the button and get admitted or is it? No, there's, there are guest lists, there's security, enormous security. You drive up to the gate and you press the button, they say, can I help you? And you, you say who you are and then they refer to a piece of paper and then they let you in. But obviously if you're, you're a girl, it's a lot easier to get up there than if you're a guy. Yeah. Uh, the setup in the house, as you describe it, there's a big, what do you call them, jacuzzi or something? Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's hot, bubbling water, you know, jets of water. Mm. Oh, it's, it's quite exhausting, actually. You get very limp in there, very limp. Well, everyone sort of goes there before dinner, do they, and pairs off or what? Oh, uh, well, people go... Actually, if you have a game of tennis or something, you know, it's very nice to go and relax in a jacuzzi. Yeah. Um, but obviously they use it for sexual pranks and things late at night. But how does it all work? Does, does Hitler sort of sit up there like the king of the mansion and say, mm -hmm. I want that girl there, go get her? 
No, he's no, he's <laughs> he's no, he's very sweet, a little more civilized than that. In fact, he's a little shy. He doesn't like to approach women himself. He like like somebody else to ask. Them. I mean, you know, do do, do you like hair? Because he he hates to be rejected, and also he doesn't like to force upon a girl the fact you know because he's Hugh Hefner he's a big name he doesn't want a girl to feel that she's obliged to jump around with him so he's he, he's shy in a way it's strange you, you you had a bedroom sort of just down the hall from him <coughs> yeah, for a short time yes well, I, when I arrived there we stayed mm. so I found accommodation of my own but what's his bedroom like is it uh He's full of piles of newspapers everywhere, cuttings, and he's sort of on 1969 of his scrapbook, <laughs> and the wads of them everywhere, and you have to wade in, and then there are lots of machines at the end of the bed, sort of big telev television screens for showing movies and things like that. A lot of apparatus. He loves gadgets. All most Americans do love gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> But it's an amazing lifestyle, is and uh, to with yeah. a statement of the week. But uh, you mentioned his kids in the book, and I often wonder. I mean, how could any guy grow up with a father like that, or how could a daughter grow up with a father like that, and sort of be anything like what you call normal? I mean, it's such a unusual buzz. They're super it? kids, in fact, but they grew up with their mother, you know, yeah. Millie Gunn, until about twelve, and then they started associating with daddy um christy in fact the daughter is very very intelligent and very little prudish you know quite straight really, david's yeah. a little shy I, mean, I think it often happens that the children react against, react yeah. react the other way well, you mentioned quite a lot that's what my kids are gonna be like how many, how many kids have you got i'm gonna have some next year i haven't got them yet <laughs> uh, that leads to a very interesting question but uh, we'll leave it in a bias. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, well, you mentioned uh, some of the film stars that came in and out, and you also you you mention uh, one film star who you uh, uh, describe in tremendous detail, <laughs> and you don't mention his name. But later on in the book, I reckon I can pick which one it was because you sort of talk about other film stars later on, and you sort of piece it together. And I'm just wondering, are you absolutely black in Hollywood now? Do they say that woman oh, I don't yes, want to I'm, know her? I can't get laid in Hollywood. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> My next question was going to be, why are you in Australia? I don't think I'll ask it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, well, look, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I am sure you are. Well, look, I thought seeing you um, seeing you photograph some very, very beautiful bunnies all around the world, that, uh, and I noticed you got your camera with you. Yes, we I was hoping your... you were going to give us a little exposure. <laughs> I've done better than that. I've got you a most amazing bunny you've ever seen. Do you, do you want to photograph her? Oh, wow, where? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, our Mike Well Show bunny. <laughs> You said she takes photos of bunnies. Yes, I know. So she can't she take a photo of me? Well, I'd would... love to, but would you like to come come back to my hotel with me later and we'll practice then? <laughs> <laughs> right. Very nice. You're not getting anything else for Christmas, okay? So it's nice to meet you. Thanks for joining Thank us on the show. Bye bye, Cheryl. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Spike, Spike Milligan on today's show. <laughs>